Cynthia Jenkins is a well-known community leader, and she too is on the board at Southeastern Assistance in Healthcare. Cynthia, thank you for joining us for this special. I know it's near and dear to your heart, which we'll get into um, shortly. Absolutely. Let's talk about the application process that the patients go through and then how it ends up where they actually get the money. How do, how do patients apply? Well, we have two ways to apply. We have applications online, mm -hmm. but we also have paper applications available at the hospital, the Cancer Treatment Centers mm -hmm. of America. And those applications are applied for monthly and then they're turned in to the board. And then an early committee, which I'm a part of, mm -hmm. goes through those applications. Um, as Michelle said, we have about 50 to 60 mm -hmm. applications, even more. As a matter of fact, every month we get more applications. Mm -hmm. um, and fortunately, each month our budget has been growing so that we are able to help more people. Um, as it stands, we're giving away at about $19,000 a month. That's phenomenal. This fiscal year, we have helped 655 times. Oh, wow. Um, we have um, such dire needs within our community when um, patients come in and, and they ask. I mean, you, you know, you just don't think that some people are, for instance, you know, we take for granted that we have salaried employees right. who can take sick time off. But for those patients who have hourly employment or mm -hmm. whose employment is dependent upon um, projects and, and mm -hmm. completion dates and things like that, right. they, they don't have that cushion. It, it, it just crumbles their world. It does. We often have patients that come in that say, I'm making absolutely nothing this month and I don't know how I'm going to pay my bills. And they're making nothing, but yet the mortgage, the car payment, they the child coming. care, everything, that doesn't stop just because you're a cancer patient. That's right. So mentally, as we know, all the components, uh, which is part of the integrative um, you know, model of care is that, and we know as cancer has affected both of our families, is that it's mental, it's physical, it's spiritual, it's everything comes together to help heal a patient. That's right. And when a patient has or is troubled with the financial aspect and worrying about their family, that doesn't help them fight the disease. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. It, you know, one of the the ways that we're able to help is to take that stress of financial mm -hmm. burdens off of them. Um, because when a patient is dealing with cancer, you know, the, there's so many things that they have mm -hmm. to deal with. And, you know, from the diagnosis to the treatment, to the effects of treatment, mm -hmm. to not being able to do the things that they used to do or mm -hmm. that they could do while they were mm -hmm. healthy. Mm -hmm. You know, the last thing they need to be worried about is how am I going to pay my gas bill? How am right. I going to pay my mortgage? And so we're trying our best to help as much as we can. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, with even though that nineteen thousand dollars sounds like a lot, spread across. Oh, it doesn't go very far. People, yeah, that doesn't. <laughs> you know, it's it's a drop in the bucket. But even though it, it does help, mm -hmm. it does help. Um, and we've had patients that have written us letters that say, you know what, this was perfectly timed because mm. I just didn't know how I was going to pay this bill. And thank you very much for what you're doing. And that, of course, spurs us on to try and do more right. so that we can help more people. Well, I think that's critical for our viewers to understand, too, that they don't have to wait for an event that SAIH puts on, that that's they right. can contribute at any time. And I want to challenge our corporate, um, you know, friends and neighbors in the community that it, it's I know that there are so many wonderful charities and every all of them come to the same people all the time asking right. for donations, but this one holds a special place in a lot of people's hearts. And whether it's a dollar or a hundred thousand dollars, it's all gonna go back to someone who is in dire need of that dollar. Correct? That's right, absolutely. You know, it, it doesn't take an event to donate to us. Right. You can get right. online and donate. You can, as a matter of fact, one of my favorite stories is a little girl who did a lemonade stand and brought the change in and said, I want to help. You know, that's a it's great that idea. Children could have birthday parties, and now they're doing this more where instead of giving gifts at the birthday party, they bring a donation for that's a particular right. um, you know, um, organization, and that this would be perfect for, for them right. to donate for that. That's right. Let's turn a little bit more toward a personal note. Why did you get involved with this organization? Um, when, um, when I was approached about this, I thought this is the perfect way 
to help people deal with something that my sister dealt mm -hmm. with. My sister um, was six and a half years older than me and she passed away in 2003 of colon cancer at the age of 35. Wow. Um, we did not see that coming. Mm -hmm. And she fought valiantly for 17 months. And during that time, you know, I saw the toll that cancer could take on someone mm -hmm. and their family. And their families. And That's their what families. I was going to say. It's not just the individual who is suffering from the disease. It is surrounding in a circle of their family and friends that it affects. That's right. My parents were her primary caregivers, mm -hmm. um, and they had to do everything, mm -hmm. everything. Um, fortunately, they were retired. Um, fortunately, she had a great job at a bank. And, and a had lot of great people insurance. don't have that. Exactly. But if she hadn't had that, mm -hmm. it would have been a financial burden for her. Sure. Um, you know, she had to go on disability, which, of course, reduces your income. Mm -hmm. So it was just, it was a very trying time for her, my parents, myself, our friends. Sure. Everybody that had to try and chip in mm -hmm. um, to help. And fortunately, we were surrounded by a very loving community that helped out in more ways than mm -hmm. we could ever thank them for. So as a way for us to, to be thankful for what um, kindness was extended to us, we decided to, to do this. And this was a way to do that for me. That's, that's so. awesome. Um, my mom died 24 years ago of breast cancer. Technology has, has come so far. Yep. If today she were diagnosed, I'm sure she would not um, you know, be in the situation that she yep. would have passed. Yep. And my father died 12 years ago of an operable brain tumor. Oh, wow. um, and that is something that if, once again, the technology, mm -hmm. even, you know, daily the technology changes to help. And it only makes it better the more we can give back to them to take care of their non-medical needs right. so that that technology and the wonderful doctors that are in this community can help them fight that disease so they That's can right. go on with their life. Absolutely. Stay with us. We'll be right back for a lot more about the Southeastern Assistance in Healthcare.